Let me repeat what he said. Hitler massacred 3 million Jews. Now, there are 3 million drug addicts. I'd be happy to slaughter them. Also, on 05 August 2016, he said this again on national TV. said that's why my order really is shoot to kill i don't care about human rights believe me i don't give a shit to what they want to say to this war against drugs end of quote finally on 10 february 2017 duterte said this <laughs> admitted against the, doc, against the advice of his doctor, Duterte placed the whole fentanyl patch instead of cutting it into four pieces. Because, and I quote, more than just the disappearance of pain, you feel that you are on cloud nine. It is like uh, everything is okay with the world. Nothing to worry about. End of quote. Fentanyl, as, you may, as most of you may know, is now labeled as the most dangerous drug in North America. It is highly addictive and even more potent than heroin. His statements from Duterte basically define the messed up state the Philippines is in. We have a war on drugs policy that's run by a leader who is a self-confessed fentanyl addict with a murderous streak. This same leader, as the father of the nation, is mandated by the Philippine Constitution to uphold the human rights of his own people. True enough, since the first day in office, Duterte embarked on a killing spree using agents of the state that left thousands of our countrymen dead. How many exactly? The government spokesmen say 4,000. But human rights groups say at least 13,000. Well, today we will finally settle this matter. Let me direct you to an undisputed reference. The Duterte administration's year-end report, 2017 accomplishments. This was released by the Office of the President to the media officially on 26 December 2017. <coughs> of those who allegedly resisted arrest. But curiously, 
the DILG also listed 16,335 homicide cases under investigation from July 1, 2016 to September 30, 2017. Since it was listed under the section of fighting illegal drugs, therefore, all of these deaths are drug-related and not for other causes. The report cited the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, Philippine National Police, National Bureau of Investigation, and Bureau of Customs as sources of this data. Those killed by the known assailants then dumped on sidewalks or vacant lots with bodies or faces wrapped in packing tape would fall in this category. Most of them have this ubiquitous cardboards on top of the dead bodies saying, I am a drug pusher, don't be like me. Now, before I get accused of peddling fake news, this accomplishment report was reported in the med in various media outlets like uh, GMA News Online, these are the major news outlets in Manila. If you can see here, they cited the same numbers, 3,807 and 16,335. Also in the ABS-CBN uh, news, also 3,967 and 16,355. Then at the Inquirer, same data, 3,967 and 16,355. And was even posted in the official Facebook page of the Philippine National Police. So these are the same numbers. Now, going back to the official government figures, if we add the deaths resulting from police operations and the death uh, or the drug-related homicides under investigation, we get 20,322 total number of deaths slash DJKs <coughs> under Duterte's war on drugs as of December 2017. Now, the biggest breakthrough in this document is in their hubris in reporting the deaths of thousands of Filipinos as an accomplishment, they basically admitted that there are no so-called vigilante killings and that these deaths are in fact state-sponsored executions. Why else would you take credit for the work of unknown assailants or vigilantes and include it in Duterte's year-end report as an accomplishment? I believe the International Criminal Court would be very interested in this piece of information. As it is, such a, a number is quite shocking by any standard. But can you imagine a president of any country who would actually cite the deaths of his own people from summary executions as an accomplishment? Mm -hmm. Remember, these deaths include those merely suspected of being drug pushers who were not given a day in court to prove their innocence or even if guilty were no longer arrested as our laws dictate and those suspected of being drug addicts were not even given a chance to be drug tested or even if they are real addicts were no longer given a chance to be rehabilitated and reformed what's really unfortunate is a majority of uh, Duterte <coughs> apologists and supporters are willing to turn a blind eye towards these deaths in their belief that this strategy of killing addicts and pushers could help eradicate crime and illegal drugs in our country. 
But how about the hundreds or maybe thousands of totally innocent people who were neither pushers nor users, but were killed just the same, either because of mistaken identity or simply because they were at the wrong place at the wrong time? Like Ian De Los Santos, the 17-year-old boy who was, jo who was just walking casually in their neighborhood when he was suddenly apprehended, dragged, then fatally shot by police officers while he was pleading for his life. This incident was uh, caught on tape, by the way. And the more than 30 children who were killed in this so-called war on drugs. Like uh, Saninho Butukan, pet seven year, a seven-year-old boy, Saninho died when he was hit by a stray bullet while the police were conducting an anti-drug operation in Corporation Cebu last December 3-2015. Danica <coughs> is the granddaughter of a drug surrenderer. Three days after her grandfather surrendered to the police, an unknown man repeatedly shot him in their house in the Gupan. Danica died due to a shot in the head last August 2015. Athea died wait, with her father when they were repeatedly shot by policemen in Gibulguman, Negros Oriental. Her father allegedly fired a gun to the policemen and was suspected to be a drug dealer. Francisco, a five-year-old five boy, died when their house was repeatedly shot by unknown suspects in Pasay City last December 11, 2015. His father was suspected to be a drug dealer or to die. Now, aside from those uh, directly killed, there are now orphans uh, because of those uh, victims who were killed. According to the Assistant Secretary of uh, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, an estimated number of, or an estimate of 18,000 children have lost their parents because of their the war on drugs. This one, the case of uh, Joaquin Garbo. He has uh, he had ten children before he was killed. Hours after he was arrested from their house and was brought to the special anti-illegal drugs unit in the Botas, Joaquin Garbo was found dead. His wife and ten children were orphaned. This had a bad effect on his son, John Ryan, who keeps on saying, I will take revenge for Papa. They took and killed him, he was just sleeping. Sometimes he was seen by his aunt playing with the toy gun. According to John Ryan, this is just a toy, it's not mine. This is just plastic, not like the one they used to kill Papa. What is uh, perplexing about this uh, drug war is how ruthless and unforgiving it is to the ordinary Filipino, yet quite lenient on big-time drug offenders. <coughs> the uh, Department of Justice cleared everyone implicated in the importation of the 6.4 billion peso shabu shipment. And here's the thing, Duterte promoted the DOJ prosecutor who exonerated those implicated in this uh, <coughs> Shabu smuggling case. <laughs> Next. Just last Monday, the DOJ cleared suspected drug lords from uh, their cases at the department. One, this one in the picture, is a, a friend or a compadre, as we call, of uh, Duterte himself. Peter Lim was uh, named by the Philippine National Police, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, and Duterte himself as the biggest drug lord in the Philippines. Yet, he cleared, uh, he was cleared of all <coughs> Next. Worse, Duterte promoted the DOJ prosecutor who cleared uh, Peter Lim and the other drug lords from their illegal drug cases. So, it is clear now, this is not a real war against illegal drugs as claimed by Duterte. 
Now the question is, what is it for? Well, based on our analysis and the uh, inside information, the nationwide EJKs are but part of Duterte's diabolical plan to control every segment of society, much like what he did as mayor of Davao City. It is meant to strike fear in the hearts of the people so he could control and manipulate them. Expanding further, Duterte in just 20 months has weakened practically all democratic institutions in the Philippines and now has almost total control of every sector of Philippine society. He has been uh, persecuting the political opposition, like uh, Senator uh, Delima, and uh, as mentioned by uh, Senator Marco, <coughs> just this morning, the Department of Justice has filed a case uh, against me for uh, inciting to sedition. Inciting what? I really don't know. But uh, that's how the Philippine courts are now he has been harassing mainstream media, undermining the church, attacking the ombudsman. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court right now is facing uh, an impeachment complaint uh, herself. And most of all, he has corrupted the police. Moreover, there is now a perpetual martial law in Mindanao. A few months ago, Duterte even floated the idea of declaring a revolutionary government. And now he is attempting to amend the 1987 constitution to ensure his hold on power beyond his term. Truly, all these tactics are straight out of a dictator's handbook. Even the ICC, before uh, Duterte withdrew uh, from the ICC, was not spared.